curiosity creates cash. That's a great, if you ever want to get a tattoo, get that tattooed on you in Latin. Curiosity creates cash. And I can see in every aspect of life, the wealthiest business partners I've had. I've had three that were on the Forbes list, multi-billionaires. I've had, I know about seven billionaires personally. Um, and they all are strikingly curious compared to the masses. Strikingly. I, I tell this story, Mark Cuban, Came to my place in Beverly Hills years ago. First time I ever met him. Comes in the house. We walk out of the house through the foyer into the backyard. And he asked me about the hinges on the door. He was interested why the hinges worked that way. He's like, I haven't seen hinges like that. That's curious. He's asking me. He didn't come in there you know, and ask <laughs> what you think he would ask. He's not just a person only being curious about money. One of the first times, probably the third time I met Elon Musk, we were, <laughs> believe it or not, we were in the urinal, the bathroom in, uh, it was the season premiere of season six of Game of Thrones. I had just seen them a week before um, at, I I was, I'm friends with, if you've ever seen Rocky IV, the Russian, okay? Drago is his name. So I went with him to see the premiere of a Coen uh, Brothers movie, and I was sitting next to Elon. And I just posted this video a while ago. You can see that on my Instagram where I was asking about books. But the second, the next time I saw him a week or two later, he said to me, I have a question for you. I know you do social media. Do you think I should use Snapchat to grow my Tesla car brand? I thought that was interesting. There was a curiosity there. He wasn't there to show off. He wasn't going, yo, bro, I'm more richer than you. I'm richer basically than almost anybody. So I don't have any questions for you. No, he was curious. Um, I have a funny video. If you scroll back to about 2017, I used to go to this lunch. It's once a year lunch. It's kind of invite only. I'm not even sure how I got in, but it, it's 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 kind of it's uh, movie producers, top A-list actors. I forget what it's called. It's some film AFI or something like that. So I go to this dinner. It was crazy A-list people. The table next to me was Steven Spielberg. It was right after the movie, um, The Big Short. So the Big Short people were all sitting together. So it was Brad Pitt. It was Brad. It was uh, who's Batman? Batman. What's the actor that plays Batman? He's also plays American Psycho. <sighs> Slipping my mind. Come on. One of the big best actors out there. Um, Michael Christian Keaton. Bale. Christian Bale. Bale. You know, it's funny. Most actors are most actors are smaller in person. Christian Bale's a big boy. He's you're like whoa. You know, there was uh, anyway. So it was an a, a, um, the Office, <laughs> the main character, uh, uh, Stephen Carell was there. Quietest. You know, he's the most introverted guy in Hollywood. You would know that. Very shy. He brings an assistant with him so that nobody talks to him. He's like shy. Anyway, as there's a video I was filming after the dip lunch, and I was like, uh, the guy taps me on the shoulder and goes, hey, that's cool. How'd you learn to film like that? I turned around. No, it was Steven Spielberg. I got it on camera because many people have doubted me. I'm like, ha-ha. So I always tell my video editors, you should listen to me because Steven Spielberg asked me questions. But he was curious. He walked across the room. He saw me filming. This was back when I would film tons of selfie YouTube, like a daily vlog. And he's like, oh, that's cool. You hold the hand count. And he's like, can you show me that? And I was thinking, mind blown, curiosity. I get around entrepreneurs making a million dollars a year. They ain't asking any fucking questions. <laughs> Steven Spielberg is a real billionaire. And, you know, not just a billionaire, but a, a world-renowned artist, director, you know. So you have to ask yourself, let's call it the Steven Spielberg, Elon Musk scale of curiosity where do you fall and then the second question is do you implement your curiosity so you need curiosity and the implementation and once you have that if i could just wave a magic wand there's hundreds and hundreds of people on this call i could just wave it over you i would just be like may you have steven spielberg elon musk curiosity mark cuban hinge curiosity <laughs> hinges he was like oh cool hinges he was asking about the door handles he noticed that my basketball court 
used to be a former tennis court because there was a little thing sticking up. Okay. I'm going, hmm. I get around seven figure entrepreneurs, six figure entrepreneurs, and they're curious, but I'm not putting them, they're like a six. They're like a six in curiosity. And the richer they get, the cockier they get. God help you if you ever meet an entrepreneur making like six mil. These are the most annoying people because they're better than most. So they lose their curiosity. They're not walking across the room to ask you any question because they're pride. You know, put down a pride up the curiosity. Why do I like books? Because books are an expression of curiosity. You know? So you must, and you. some of you might say this is too general of advice. Well, this fucking good advice. So if you don't like that kind of advice, you're kind of an idiot. Some good advice is general in nature. Some good advice is general in nature. If you walk up to Elon Musk and say, how do I make money online? Do you think he's going to tell you, well, I want you to build a funnel. I charge $7 versus 12. And he's not going to give you a specific piece of advice because you have to adjust to your skill set. He's going to give you powerful advice. So sometimes you give general advice. Oh, it's too general. Well, some E equals MC squared is pretty fucking general, but it's one of the most powerful thoughts in human history. Energy equals mass times the constant square. Energy is mass. What? Energy is mass? What the hell does that mean? That That's a fundamental, uh, you know, the, the concept of Charles Darwin, which is not the, it's the evolution or the survival of the fittest. Three words, very general, three, four words, survival of the fittest. Four words, general in nature, but so profound that it changed the course of human history without a doubt. Evolutionary psychology, evolutionary biology, everything is built on this understanding of the adaptation of the human genome and other genomes. So the greatest advice tends to be generalized. The lower IQ advice tends to be highly specific, but you do need both. I didn't say you don't need specific advice. I just said the most important advice of your life is the generalized. If I could go back and be 18 and advise myself, step out of the time machine, I'm giving myself three, probably three pieces of generalized advice. And then it's up to you, Ty, to see if you're smart enough to apply them specifically. I'd be like ignoring 99 out of 100 people. But when you find the one person who knows what they're talking about, do everything they say. Don't pick and choose their formula. Number two, I would tell myself almost everybody's lost. Almost every, there's very few people who know really anything. Okay, now collective intelligence, 8 billion humans at once are pretty smart. But in general, you will be led astray much. Even the people you esteem now probably don't know what they're talking about. And then number three, I would teach myself to think in frameworks of thought. I will be like, you need a general framework of thought. For example, when hiring and designing a contract, build the most flexible contract. I teach my team, my legal team, I, how do we build the most flexible system? So I don't like to sign a two-year contract for somebody I just met yesterday to come be an independent contractor for me. I'm building a month-to-month -month contract. That's a framework of thought. And I, I have accumulated about 300 frameworks of thought. I've taught 67 of them in the 67 steps. And I would teach myself to think in frameworks. The fourth one, I would say, in general, you need to change your geography. Don't just live in America um, or don't just live in one place. As soon as you make enough money, you need dual locations. It's fine. People say, what about my children? Your children will be better off if you have two locations. Come on, what are we talking about? <laughs> this is a provable IQ goes up for children who, children who travel. So I would, you know, a practical piece of advice is framework. In general, you don't want one home. Okay. You, you sec, second, you make enough money, you want two homes. Now you can escalate that and have five or six homes, but that's not for everybody. But one is too little. You're putting all your eggs into one culture. If you're born in Sweden, you need another home. If you're born in Nebraska, you need another home. If you're born in Mexico, you need another home. Ideally, you have two places that you rotate through. Smart in general, the smartest people in the world have two places, even if they're not hyper wealthy. Einstein had two places. You know, it would rotate around. It increases curiosity, creative juices when you change. Depends on how much dopamine you're driven by. But you can see, I'm going back to my 18-year-old self, I'm giving frameworks of thought. I'm not telling them, 
live in this city and this city because that changes over time. So if you get too specific with advice, you actually lock yourself in and you defeat the purpose of the framework. Frameworks must be generalized in nature. So going back before we go in the breakout rooms, the goal is, you've heard me say it before, but I'm saying it again because it's so important that curiosity creates cash because curiosity, so it's curiosity creates cash because creativity creates wealth. So curiosity is the precursor of creativity. Low creativity, uh, cre low curiosity people cannot be curious, uh, cannot be creative. Einstein spoke of this, you know, the greatest human trait. He did not said, I'm not smarter than others, but I'm more curious and more creative. Okay, pretty smart guy. So curiosity is the precursor. It's like a, 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 it's like a chemical catalyst. You, you build the curiosity. You're Mark Cuban's, why is he asking about, you know, door hinges? How, what does that have to do with him becoming a billionaire? Because the mindset that's curious about the door hinges also becomes a creative machine, right? When Schultz was in Italy, everybody else was having coffee at the Italian shops. He was like, I'm curious. How do you do this? What kind of coffee is this? And then what did he do? He took that business back to the United States and started Starbucks. That was a, a curiosity. The fountain mid at Mateschutz was a guy traveling in Southeast Asia from Austria. He was reading the newspaper, reading. He's like, oh, that's curious. This drink company, this energy sweet drink is the biggest taxpayer in whatever, Southeast Asia. I'm curious. What is this? What is and he comes back and builds Red Bull. Phil Knight. What's Phil Knight do? He's traveling to Japan. He knows he kind of wants to be an entrepreneur. He's like, I'm curious. What are these shoes you all are wearing? He finds a manufacturer. He brings that shoe back to the United States and calls it Nike. Okay. Walt Disney. He's traveling to Denmark, Copenhagen. He sees Tivoli. It's an amusement park. He's curious. What is this? What are these rides? How do they work? Why don't you have bigger rides? Why don't you have smaller rides? He comes back and builds Disneyland. There's a pattern here, ladies and gentlemen. It's the curious one. Curiosity creates the cash. Then once that small snowball is rolling, creativity comes. And creativity creates wealth, not just cash. Wealth and health. Wealth in all areas of life, not just financial. It is what makes humans different. Dogs have a little bit of curiosity, but they don't have a medium prefrontal cortex. It is a little bit hard for them to be highly creative. They live off. I have animals. I love my dogs. I love my horses, but they're not creative in the sense that humans are with the MPFC, medium prefrontal cortex. So what allows a Nike to be built, a Disney to be built. It's the medium prefrontal cortex stimulated through the ball rolls with a little curiosity about everything, about hinges, about books, about, oh, well, like, why is this yellow? What is yellow? What is the color? Does anybody know what the color red is, for example? An apple's not red. It's reflecting the red back to your eyes. The apple's actually not red. Did you know that? Did you know you age faster on top of a mountain than down at the beach? Did you know the reason you fall is because time, at the center of the earth, because it's heavy mass, time moves slower. So whenever you fall, you fall in the direction of where time moves slow. That's why when you're in space and there's no mass to warp time, you float. How many people know that? You went through sixth grade, first grade, second, third, fourth, you went through, and some of you went through all the way through college. You don't know that. It's a sad world we live in. Curiosity shrinks because of Google. It shrinks. People know very little. Did you know most likely in string theory, there's another universe, one micron away from you, but you can't you can't be there because strings, the strings are vibrating at a different frequency. Did you know time probably doesn't exist? It's called the time block theory of the universe. By the way, if you're religious, it'd be the same thing. That's why you believe in a God who's outside time. If you're Muslim, Christian, you know, usually <laughs> Jewish, you believe there's a God that time not dictate. Well, Scientists call that the block time theory, and they kind of have somewhat confirmed it. Did you know that the, out of the 10 wealthiest people in the world, 
the majority of them bought their businesses and didn't start them from scratch. Why are you starting from scratch? Oh, you don't have the curiosity to understand how the game works. Did Mark Zuckerberg start Instagram? Nope, he bought it. Did he start WhatsApp? Nope. Three billion, two to three billion people use his apps. He only built one third of it. The empire of Facebook in many ways is the worst of his empire. Did Elon Musk build PayPal from scratch? Nope, but he made 130 million from that. His first 100 million plus exit. Were you curious? Did you notice that out of the 10 wealthiest people, know eight of them are in the tech space? But then the second biggest one is retail. What retail? I thought a lot of people go oil is where you make all your money. No one on the top 10 from any energy business. Did you know that? Wait a second. I was told real estate makes people the wealthiest, that there's nobody in the United States on the top 30 who made their money in real estate. Hmm, curiosity. How do I know this? I don't know. Maybe it's genetic. I, I have flaws and I have strengths. You know, I was de fate, destiny. I was born to very curious grandparents and mothers and fathers. But even me, it's not enough. I have to push myself. Some of you will struggle with this and you will make less money. Now, I want to emphasize one disclaimer. It is possible to be too curious and forget to implement, and you will also be poor. I have met people who are addicted to curiosity. Oh, I want to do books. I want to look at hinges. I want to, uh, but but if we're going to implement it, obviously there's no manifestation of money without something being built. Creativity, you build something. Imagine if I was a creative guy and I'm like, I know how to build a great skyscraper, and I just think about it all the time. And years, oh my skyscraper. Let me drop. Well, eventually the skyscraper must be manifested through action, through pouring concrete, <laughs> digging a hole, and getting your hands dirty. So I want you to be a great, uh, the ratios must be there. The ratio between the mind, the curiosity, the creativity, and the implementation. And in general, very few people have the right balance. Mark Cuban would have the right balance. <laughs> Zuckerberg would have the right balance. Jeff Bezos would have the right balance. And, and the world has rewarded them. Now, some of it's luck and fate and destiny. I wouldn't call it luck, but it's more likely there's just parallel universes. In this parallel universe, Zuckerberg is the only person to ever build a hundred billion net worth before 37. There's probably 10 to the 500 power parallel universes, if you believe Stephen Hawking and M theory. That's all the grains of sand on the earth and all the seconds since the beginning of time is not even 10 to the 500 power, it's a big number. So in this permutation that we live in, that we feel we're in, you must follow these rules. Now, if you can skip parallel universes, you can ignore what I say. There's a universe out there where curiosity makes you poor. Not this one though. Whatever this number is in the 10 to 500 power, not this one, okay? So follow the rules of this parallel universe unless you know how to shift universes. If you're Christian, Heaven is a shifted place or Muslim, you know, religions speak of shifts outside of time. I'm not an expert on that. So I cannot sadly instruct any of you on that. Okay. I seem to know the most about this, this universe that we find ourselves in. I think there's four trillion galaxies or is it four trillion galaxies or universes? Maybe there's infinite. So Good. All right. I got to go back to this movie.